This is code.org. Do this. This program transverses or goes through two parallel lists ooh, to print the price of each piece of fruit. There are two other parallel lists of students and what grade they're in. Read the code and run to see how it works. All right, so we have fruits, we have prices, got it, peaches, okay. Fruit price for a variable up here. So I bet we're going to use that to store what's at it, different indexes. And now we have a four list. So quick reminders here, four I is equal to zero. So that means, hey, we're going to use this to count. I is going to start at zero, which makes sense because what is index zero? Well, apples, right? Indexes start at zero, 99 cents. Okay. I must be less than the length of how many fruits, right? So however long that list is, I has to be less than that. And then each time we loop, we're adding one to I. That's what I plus plus means. So then we drop, and since I starts at zero, is zero less than fruits? Yes. All right, less than the length of fruits? True, yes. So we drop down and we run the code inside this. Fruit is going to be equal to fruits I. Well, what's fruits I? Well, I is equal to zero, so fruits I would be apple. Price will be equal to prices I. What's prices I? I is zero, so 99 cents. Then we're going to print to the council, log to the council, fruits, plus, since this is in quotes like this, I know it's a string, so plus space, the word cost, space, plus price. What was fruits? Well, that was whatever we just did here, which was the zero index of fruits, so that's apple, price, zero index, that was 99 cents. We at the bottom, we go back to the top. Okay, I is now equal to whatever it was before, right? I plus plus, so whatever it was before, plus one is what that means so it was zero now i is equal to one then we dip down is one less than the length of the fruits yep there's like five or six things so since it's less we dip down fruit is the equal to fruits i what's i one well the one index is banana so fruits now banana price is the one index of prices is points uh, 0 0.69 so price is 69 cents then we do council log fruits plus the word cost plus price that goes to the council we hit the bottom plus plus and we keep going till the end of the list now they want us to do that with this so let's go ahead and grab control var okay now they have i's right here already declared i will be doing like i have been at j it's a good idea to get into habit since we already used i up here i don't want to redeclare the variable I think it will work currently um, in JavaScript or maybe in code.org, but it's most programming languages, you would want a different variable for another loop. So I'm going to use J. Works just the same as I showed you above. J starts at zero. Right now I'm saying be less than four and J plus plus, add one each time. Now I'm going to use their method of attack. Okay. So, oh, and look, is in grade, got it their method of attack, which is var var. So I'm going to declare two variables outside of the loop. The reason you would declare these outside is you don't want to redeclare the variable every single time you go through the loop. You can just have a variable and change its value. So I'll say student and then I'll say grade. Okay. And now just like they have here, I want to go equals and equals and then I'm going to do an item on a list. So if I want, I can just drag this out. And what am I going to do? Well, I want to set student to be equal to student, not one, but J. So whatever, whatever number J is at that time, I'm going to stuff it into that student variable. Now I'm going to do grade be equal to grade. And what number J, whatever loop section of the whatever number in our loop we're at, that's what I want those equal to. And then just like they did, I'm going to council log and let me double check here. It says, okay, so that's how we're going to do it. So I can use pluses like they did. I'm going to go to text mode. It honestly might be easier to read because I'm going to get rid of messages and I have council log. I have council log and then I'm going to put, well, first I have the variable student which will be their name, then I'm going to put a plus sign and I'm going to put space is in grade because this is a string. I must put it in quotes space and then I'm going to do another plus sign and be careful with those quotes. They can mess things up and then grade. And this should work just like our. I forgot an S right here. This should work just like the stuff that did above. I forgot an S right here. 
Very important because with an S, they're the lists. I use variables without S's. All right. And let's check it out. Hopefully it loops through, it shoves together student, is in grade, and they're grade from the list. Um, I think they gave us. Yep. Yep. Abel's in grade 12. Oh, what's the problem? We're not going through the whole list. And that is because I gave this a number. We don't want to do that. We want to just ask. We want to do students dot length, just like they do up here, right? Yep, students dot length, fruits dot length. Um, and that's because rather than counting out how many items are list and putting a number here, if we were to add or delete something from our list, it would break our loop. So it's better just to have the computer find, figure out how many items are in the list and loop through all of them. One more time. And we got them all. Awesome. Onward.